you'll see the populations will just show several different types of growth. Now, this is actually very rare in nature, but let's assume that in every generation, that is, is, uh, each person were to add exactly the same number of people on every generation. So, for example, every generation, one more person is born in the population. That's not how life usually works, but if that was the case, you would see a pattern that's like this. You would see a growth of numbers over time that's called linear growth, because if every day you add one more than you had the day before, that's going to be an equal rate, and the population will grow like a flat line like that. Linear growth is not very common in nature. I just wanted to show you this because you need to know what it is. But in nature, what's usually going to happen if there's plenty of resources is what we call exponential growth. Now imagine, for example, that you start with two rabbits, and rabbits have this thing that they can, within three months, they can have a litter of eight rabbits, right? And now three months later, they can have eight more, and three months later, they can have eight more, and three months later, they can have eight more. Now within three months, the litter that, that was born can actually have eight more, each, each of the pairs on the, that litter. And if you do the math, that means that in a few months, the population can explode in numbers, like crazy numbers. Now, what this is showing you here is an increase in the population numbers that it's exponential because if every generation you add multiple numbers compared to the numbers you had before, the numbers will explode. Let's say, for example, that every, pop every generation the population was to double, like a bacteria, for example, okay? So you start with, say, two. But if that doubles by the, the next generation, then you have four. But then if that doubles, because they're splitting, you know, binary fission, now you have eight. And then they split again, and now you have 16. You split again, and you have 32. You split again, you have 64. You split again, you have 128, and then 256. And you can keep going with this. You'll see that in just a few generations, you're going to get to a million. And since a bacterial generation happens in a matter of hours, within a few days, the population can go from a single bacteria, number one, that's split into two, to a million bacteria. And that's why, you know, this kind of growth is going to be common in life because life tends to do exactly that. A couple will have, will have babies together, but usually they don't have just one baby. They will have several. And even if they have just one baby, uh, like humans, for example, typically we only have one baby per encounter. Uh, in many cases, they will have multiple babies throughout their lifetime. So that means that populations will tend to exponentially grow in life. Now, in such a situation where there's unlimited resources, we say that the population is growing in what we call it its intrinsic growth rate. So intrinsic as in like whatever is coming from within them. So the only thing limiting their growth is themselves or how fast they can do the things that they can do in order to actually achieve that reproduction rate that, that we're talking about. So intrinsic growth rate is referred to as the rate at which a population will grow if it's completely unhindered or unlimited by the environment. So in that situation, the population will grow as fast as it can grow naturally. In the beginning, it may pick up a little slow because it's hard to find mates, but then it will, it will, as soon as it, the mates are abundant, it will grow faster and faster until it reaches its maximum growth rate, which is called the intrinsic growth rate. And by the way, this is called a J-curve, and you can see why, because it's got you know, that kind of a shape, right? Like of a J. But the problem of this is that eventually you're going to run out of resources. As the population has increased this much, eventually you're going to hit a point where there's going to be too many people or too many organisms to be maintained by the environment. So let's say, for example, you're growing bacteria in a petri dish, right? Petri dish is that little thing that you put the bacteria inside and it has like the, the nutrient agar, which is whatever they actually want to eat. And then the bacteria put one over there, and, the, and the, that one will eat and grow into two, and then four, and then eight, and so forth. Eventually, it's going to run out of nutrients. So that population is going to have to die off because there's going to be nothing left for it to eat. So it will come crashing down. So this is why look, this kind of growth, exponential growth, is also rare in nature because you're not going to see this unless there's unlimited resources or if the population that exists there is very far from its carrying capacity, which takes us to the next point, this idea of logistic growth. And see how the graph here is comparing them both. So let's say that there's a maximum number of people that a population can, can be supported within the ecosystem. This number here, this line that you say, it's, we call it the K-line or the carrying capacity. 
that means that is that is the maximal number of organisms that can live in the ecosystem and be supported by the resources and nutrients that exist within the ecosystem as the population approaches that number it will tend to decrease because now competition between the members of the population will increase and the closer you get to the number the more it will increase the competition and if the population would ever to go above the carrying capacity the extra people would starve and die and therefore that limits the carrying capacity and in fact in nature you will rarely ever see the populations going above the carrying capacity it's like theoretically impossible because as you approach it the growth of the population tends to decrease more and more this means that at first it may seem like the population is going very fast but then after a while as they reach it closer and closer to the carrying capacity it starts to slow down and then never quite reach the carrying capacity and that is logistic growth and that's the way that populations typically grow in ecosystems because there's always going to be what we call limiting factors or things which put a hinder on hindrance on how many people can live in a certain area one more thing that's also important to talk about is the idea called the alley effect now this is an advanced concept so we don't expect uh, regular students to know about it but note at the beginning here of the curve that the initial growth for the population is very very small right that if at the beginning it's very very low growth and it takes a while for that to just kind of like pick up and actually uh, grow very very fast that's because in the beginning when there's so few people it's gonna be very hard for let's say to you for you to find mates it's gonna be hard for you to find a mate that's different by, from you by so diversity levels are very small so when the population is very small it's going to have a trouble growing. So that brings us again to the concept of conservation ecology uh, of that whole extinction vortex thing. Small populations have trouble growing fast because there's low biodiversity between them, there's low viability in the population, and it's hard for people to find mates. But if they do find mates and they do tend to grow, eventually they pick up speed and then when the numbers go higher, it becomes a lot easier to reproduce and they start going faster and faster. But as they approach the number of, that can be supported by the ecosystem, they, the growth starts to decrease and it flattens out. And that's why we call logistic growth an S-curve because it kind of looks like an S, right? So exponential growth is what's called J-curve and then the logistic growth is called the S-curve. And this is the one that you most often will see in nature. You will only see the exponential growth if there is unlimited resources for that population. And there, as we know, there isn't really unlimited resources on Earth anywhere. And so in most cases, it will seem that eventually the population shifts into uh, logistic growth. It may, be, it may even look like exponential growth at the beginning, but that might just be because you are, you are in the beginning of the S-curve. So if you were looking for, like, from, from the beginning to here, it kind of looks like a J-curve, right? But then you realize that it, at a certain point, it starts to shift and the growth rate starts to slow down as you're getting closer and closer to the carrying capacity. So that's population growth, and in the next video we're going to be talking about why populations are limited and actually start to grow slower.